Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video, or a not so new video, if you're watching this in the future. Let's start off today by looking at some terrain. This is a 50 by 50 plane with 5,000 total triangles. As you can see, the terrain looks just okay. This plane, on the other hand, is 1,000 by 1,000 with 2 million total triangles. The terrain here looks much, much better, but let's compare their performance. The first plane has an FPS of about 3,000, and the second plane has an FPS of uh, 74. This is a performance loss of 97%, which is completely unacceptable. We don't want nearly all of our resources used up by just one mesh. We have a whole game that needs to run on top of it. But we also want visually appealing terrain. So how do video games end up with such nice looking terrain while still maintaining playability? There's several techniques at play, but the main one, and the topic of this video, is called level of detail. And once you know about this trick, you'll never look at video games the same way again. Before we get into the details, there's a few things you should know about the rendering pipeline, or how GPUs go from mesh data to colors on your screen. The simplified pipeline looks like so. You have a vertex shader which operates on the vertices of a mesh, and then this fragment shader here takes all that data and turns it into a color on the screen. It operates per pixel of a triangle, which, if you think about it, is a lot. GPUs are really fast. Anyways, in between these two stages is actually very secret, industry-only knowledge. These two secret stages are called the whole stage and the domain stage respectively. With these two stages, we can take vertex data that is passed into the GPU and cut it up into newer, smaller triangles. This means that we can convert that 50 by 50 plane from earlier into a much higher resolution plane, all on the GPU. As you can see, we get much more detail from the height map with these new triangles. Now, you may be asking yourself, Ace Rolla, what's the difference between this and the 1000 by 1000 plane from earlier? And that's a great question. The answer is that the less mesh data you pass to the GPU, the better, as data communication will always be the biggest bottleneck of any machine. It's obviously much faster to pass 100 triangles to the GPU than a million triangles. Uh, uh-oh. Do you guys hear that? It's the performance police. They've come to write me a ticket for my reckless use of tessellation shaders. My GPU must have narked on me, and rightfully so. If we look at the FPS of our project, it has dipped drastically. It's even worse than the 1000 by 1000 plane from earlier. Okay, before the performance police kill me and confiscate my GPU for government Bitcoin mines, let's get into the main topic of this video, level of detail. In video games, or rendering in general, if an object is far away from the camera, it still has the same amount of triangles and the same amount of processing power is used to render it as if it were very close to the camera. This is problematic, wouldn't you agree? Even though we can barely make out the detail of a faraway object, it's still consuming a lot of our resources. What if, instead, we lowered the quality of objects that are far away so that they use less resources but still look the exact same? This is exactly what level of detail is all about. By using the distance of a triangle from the camera, we can control how much it is tessellated. 
Ideally, this should result in a very minimal change appearance-wise, but we should also gain a major performance increase, which is great! We are now back to what our original 50x50 50 50 planes performance was, but we have a much higher resolution mesh. To show you that this is actually doing something, the effect becomes very obvious when the plane is completely flat. Unfortunately for me, it appears the performance police are still here. There's still a major problem with this mesh, so let's go over one final trick. In graphics, there exists a concept called frustum culling. That is, objects that lie outside of a camera's view are cold. Those objects are not rendered or considered in a scene whatsoever. It is as if they do not exist. This is determined by an object's bounding box, the smallest area that a model would fit into. When this bounding box does not intersect with a camera's frustum, it is cold. Unfortunately for us, our very high resolution terrain's bounding box does reside within our camera's frustum, and all of it is being rendered, even the triangles we cannot physically see. This is very unfortunate for our performance. But it turns out, a solution to this exists, and it lies within the rendering pipeline I discussed earlier. I lied to you earlier, and for that, I apologize. But it turns out, there exists yet another very top secret pipeline stage, called the Geometry Shader Stage. This stage is responsible for finalizing the triangles of a mesh meaning it can modify triangles however we please, as well as cull them outright so that no more resources are spent on triangles we cannot see. Similar to our level of detail calculations, by calculating the frustum of our camera, we can determine if a triangle's position is within our camera's frustum, and if it is not, we cull it entirely. This optimization technique is the real cherry on top, or perhaps it is actually the cake itself, as performance improves dramatically on very large meshes such as our terrain. It's hard for me to show you that this actually works, so here's this video of my performance doubling when I look slightly away from the mesh. It appears the performance police are leaving now, and I am free to keep my GPU another day. I'd like to add a few addendums to the content of this video for any developers that could be watching. This technique of procedural level of detail is only applicable to meshes like our terrain that have their vertices displaced, as the higher the vertex resolution, the more accurate the height map representation is. This means that if you have something like a character model, you would not use this technique. Instead, you would have a few different character models with varying level of detail and render the proper one based on the distance from the camera. In this case, you are trading memory for computing power. The shader stages I discussed in this video are not free and can be quite costly. The hard part of all of this is finding the right balance between the original mesh resolution and the tessellation factors on the GPU. Nothing in graphics is a one-size-fits-all. Please remember that. Overall, level of detail is an effect that is used on literally everything right before your eyes, and most people never notice. Terrain and terrain features such as grass are the most applicable use case for this, and where it will be most noticeable. There also exists several effects to cover up level of detail artifacts, which I will probably make videos on someday. In the meantime, my next few videos will utilize the topics discussed in this video, but until then, I'd appreciate if you subscribed and checked out my other social media as well. I've got to go now, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.